So yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk of uh, the story, uh, Civil Peace by Chinu Achebe. Yeah, it's me, it's Ramesh Wathakur, okay? Uh, so let's have a look on different, uh, different parts of the uh, story. And before that, uh, let's have a short look on uh, on the writer, yes? Who is he and uh, where is he from? Then what is his writing style? Yes, we'll talk of them. So Tsunio Achebe, yes, he was born on 16th November. Yes, 16th November, uh, uh, um, 1913, 30, and died on 21st March, 2013. And he was a Nazarian novelist, uh, a poet, critic, who is regarded as the most dominant figure in modern African literature. So his space in African literature is um, quite uncomparable. So unique space he has, okay? And uh, one of his novels, one of his novels, Things Fall Apart, uh, that was uh, published in 1958, occupies a pivotal space in African literature and remains the most widely studied, taught and read. African novel, yes. And uh, in this novel, novel he has described, you know, uh, the period, uh, period before colon colonial, before the Europeans came to Nigeria. So pre-colonial stage, colonial stage, and then post-colonial stage. Okay. So uh, and he has described, and mostly what happens in most of his writings. Uh, his focus remains on, you know, uh, the cultural, traditional, uh, and political scenario of Africa, and which he has done in things fall apart. And similarly, uh, actually, he belonged to a tribe, yes, ethnic group, Igbo. And uh, at, at first, uh, what happens, he tried to escape the colonial perspective that had predominated African literature and drew from the traditions of Igbo people. And uh, when African came to Nigeria, they wanted to spread their culture, traditions, especially Christianity. And Igbo, uh, Chino, Chino attempt was to escape the African literature from the influence of, you know, Christian Christianity. Okay. And the class of Western and African values to create a uniquely African voice. So he worked for the African identity in African literature. Uh, and uh, what happened in 1967, uh, 1967, there was uh, one war started in Africa. Uh, sorry, African country, Nigeria. And uh, there was the one region, Southeastern region, Biafra. And where the majority of the people was of the Igbo community, yes, Igbo tribe. And uh, when the region of you know Biafra broke away from Nigeria in 1967, the HAB became a supporter of Biafran independence and acted as ambassador for the people of the new nation. So during that period, also his role was quite important and quite crucial. The Nigerian civil war ravaged the populace and uh, as starvation, violence took its toll. What happens uh, the, when Nigeria, Niger, Nigerian civil war, which took place uh, from 1967 to 1970, yes, uh, actually that brought widespread starvation and violence throughout Nigeria. Because of this reason, the number of the people death increased. Yes, the toll rate was quite high at the time. And uh, in the situation of uh, the panics, or in that panic situation, uh, Achebe, he requested the European countries or the people of Europe and Africa to support the people of Nigeria who, is, who are dying of starvation and violence. Uh, similarly, when the Nigerian government retook the region in 19, 1970, uh, because, uh, you know, Igbo community or Igbo or the war of uh, Biafra ended in 1970 and the government again took that region. And 
At the time, he involved himself in political parties, but soon became disillusioned by the frustration from over the corruption and elitism he witnessed. He saw that uh, uh, the leaders were corrupt and the people who were elite or elite people or the high class people, they had occupied more lands, they had, uh, you know, they had power and because of that, the corruption had increased. So later on, he didn't so much interest in it, uh, in politics. So, and uh, then he lived in the United States also later on, he got an accident, uh, accident, uh, what happens after accident? So he returned uh, to the USA. And during that period, he had come to Nigeria, he studied in Nigeria as well. And his work, his work for writing or his love for literature didn't end and uh, rather it kept going on. So uh, from this one, what we can say is Tino Atebi has, uh, has a special, you know, place, space in, in African literature. And African people, yes, can't forget him because of his role in literature as well as in politics at a time of, you know, Biafran war. Okay. So uh, how was the Chino, you know, writing style? I've shown in the map also, this is, this is um, uh, Nigeria. And uh, here, uh, um, yeah, the, the traditions or let's say the output, how was the traditions of the people of Igbo community? Yes, it's shown here. And uh, mostly what happens, uh, Achebe, yes, he used to include the Igbo tradition and culture. Yes, in his writing, what do you see? And uh, he also traces uh, the Igbo society from the pre-colonial to the post-colonial era, the period. And his focus mostly goes on the class between the Western and traditional African values in his writing. Mostly when you read his writings, his compositions or his novels or stories, yes, uh, he has tried to solve the conflict or class between the Western and traditional you know, African values. And as far as possible, he has tried to safeguard the traditional, original traditional, you know, African values, or Nigerian values. His prose evokes the values and attitudes of the group of people who witnessed the trauma of foreign conquest and impositions of the alien culture. Alien culture, especially Af European culture, and the people, the, the culture was imposed on Nigerian people. So uh, he also, uh, tr he has also tried to evoke the values and attitudes of a uh, group of people towards, you know, impositions of the alien cultures. We can see, and uh, the alien culture, uh, which had actually traumatized the Nigerian people. And mm, mostly in his writing, he has tried to show that. In his narration, Narration, the Igbo oral traditions such as folk stories, proverbs, idioms are very prominent. And it's important to know that Achebe, the major exponent of modern African novels, is an interpreter of the cultural worth of its society. Yes. Then, besides that, his work or this his work tries to identify the kalk. Kalk, actually, this is the technique in which what happens any uh, you know, loan, wo loan word or a foreign word or alien word, alien word related to, uh, you know, other cultures, other, you know, language that is mostly translated, okay? And uh, mostly uh, in most of his writings, what you can see is, he, though he has written uh, in English, but he has tried to include, you know, English word. So that is called appro appropriation actually. Uh, sorry, English word here, he has written here using English word, but he has used some local dialects also. The words or phrases from his own local languages. Yes, such as in civil peace also, civil peace is written in English, but he has used some typical, you know, typical um, dialect, local dialect. Yes, so the car, he has, he has just tried to, you know, translate also, some local words into English and English words into local languages as one of his styles and appropriation use of some words or phrases of local language in his, write, in his writing. Yes, we can see this also in you know, civil peace. 
He uses language to explain his character's performances, activities, routines, uh, you know, emotions, and ideas. So Achebe's novels provide a great picture of African past and present life with all its pains, places, and uh, puzzles. So what we can deduce in brief is that when you read his writings, his main focus goes to African culture, Nigerian culture, or traditions, and the pains and places of African people during you know, colonial period, and the conditions of Nigeria after the end of you know, civil war, or after you know, colonial period as well. Uh, so his style relies heavily on the Igbo oral tradition and combines the straightforward narration with representations of folk stories, proverbs, and oratory. So this is uh, the writing style uh, which mostly Chinew Achebe has used in his writing. And with the help of this, uh, with the help of the writing style, we can simply uh, yeah, reduce that. Uh, this helps us in uh, studying in uh, comprehending the story, the civil peace. Okay, so let's have a look on brief historical background in Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria became a formally independent federation from British colony in 1960. So it experienced Nigeria experienced a civil war as well, and the war took place from 1967 to 1970. And the government of Nigeria, between the government of Nigeria and the uh, recent state of Biafra, that was in southeastern, and this was heavily populated by a tribe, um, that's Igbo tribe, followed by a succession of democratically elected civilian governments and military dictatorships until achieving a straight democracy in 1999 presidential election. The war between the government and the Igbo community, uh, communities of Biafra that, was, that began in 1967 with the resistance of several south or southeastern provinces from Nigeria, uh, namely that Biafra, okay, led to an intensive ethnic conflict and wide spread starvation. Yeah, I, I talked earlier also because of the war, what the war destroyed. Uh, you know, national infrastructures, um, shattering Nigerian society. Many people lost their lives. And many became injured. Yeah, they lost. Uh, most of them lost their fame, uh, future. So the war was not good for you know the nation Nigeria. The Igbo tried to separate from Nigeria to form the independent Republic of Biafra. The conflict resulted from political, economic, ethnic, cultural, and religious tensions at the time. So we will talk of the setting of a civil peace. Yeah, uh, you can see the photo, yes, of Nigeria at the time, okay? And here, the setting of the civil peace, actually the setting, the time of this story is the aftermath of the Nigerian civil war. Yes, Nigerian civil war took place from 1967 to 1970. And this, uh, this story uh, is set in the aftermath of Nigerian civil war, 1971. Uh, similarly, this also relates with the Inugu. Inugu was the former capital of Biafra. When Biafra, when uh, Biafra, um, uh, Biafra was separated from Nigeria in 1967. Okay, Eastern Nigeria and this uh, surrounding countryside. Actually, uh, the, the connection also between uh, you know the countryside and then uh, the city area in Ugu actually, but uh, uh, the relationship was not of only the physical geography but of human geography more, and populated with official functionaries and neighbors. This is the setting overall setting of the civil base. And in the story, what we do is we'll just talk of uh, talk uh, talk this story from these all you know perspectives from these all points. We'll talk of protagonists. We'll talk of the characters. Characters also. Uh, we, I, as we talked right now, setting. We'll talk of antagonist also. Then we'll see this story from different uh, um, you know 
perspectives of uh, plot plots. Yeah, we'll see different plots, or we'll see the plots uh, um, dividing um, them in different groups, such as exposition, then rising action, climax, falling action, conflict resolution, and the later on we'll talk up the theme. What is the theme of the seven piece? So characters, yes, uh, you can simply see that there's a one man on a bicycle. He is going somewhere. Yes. So um, the bicycle uh, may have uh, an important role in this story. We can simply predict. So the main character is Jonathan Igbu. Okay. Jonathan Igbu, he is the main uh, character, the protagonist, and he's quite strong. Uh, he's a strong enough, uh, yes, to sustain uh, as usual, even in the case of great tragedy. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, he is quite industrious, hardworking, he's truthful, very honest and innocent as well. He's quite tolerant. Yeah, he's patient as well. He can wait for the time. He, he doesn't show any kind of haste. Okay. And he's courageous as well. Uh, and he, he thinks that he is uh, very happy because he survived the war. So uh, he is a happy survival. The Nigerian civil war with his wife and three of his four children. He had four children, but uh, after war, yes, his three children were safe. One died. He's quite optimistic. Yes, uh, he wants uh, uh, to focus more on, you know, positive side on the future. Okay, he thinks that his future would be good, though he is not sure about that. He counts blessings rather than pain. Uh, his scant material positions after war, okay, after war, his bicycle, okay, and then his home in Inugu. He uses these positions to immediately begin rebuilding his life because his life was almost shattered due to war and he survived. With his, uh, with his wife and three children. So he had to lead his future life. So he had to do something. And he used uh, the, uh, the, his positions, such as bicycle, yes, and then the house. And his bicycle, yes, uh, he took the advantage of his bicycle. He used his bicycle as a taxi. Later on, we'll talk about that his house as bar. And uh, what happens in this story when you see he was exalted by the thieves? Yes, but uh, the thieves, see the thieves took away his 20 pounds, 20 pounds, but he was not, uh, you know, he didn't complain, he didn't grumble regarding that. Le rather, he thought that, you know, uh, yeah, what he's, he lost during the war was more than the 20 pounds, okay? And he believed in God. He was quite, you know, uh, um, to say, he, he quite, uh, um, he had quite, you know, belief in God. And he thought that whatever the wish of the God, whatever happens, that's because of the wish of the God. So nothing causes God. So he was not uh, sad. He was not, you know, um, disappointed. Rather, he thought that good thing will happen and God will help. Okay. So the next uh, next character, yes, Maria Igbo. Maria Igbo was his wife and she was also uh, very supportive to her husband. She also worked to help her husband to rebuild the family. Yes, and she started, uh, after coming to Inugu, she started earning money by making uh, bean cakes or akara, akara bowls, yes. Uh, and she was selling the akara bowls to neighbors and she used to earn to support his fam her family. And the next one, the leader of the thieves, especially the mayor, antagonist, yeah, native man. This is the typical, you know, local dialect. And he was well armed, threatens violence against the eagles to get Jonathan to turn over his money. Actually, uh, he was the leader of the thieves who had come to uh, come to his house who knocked at the door on the day or the, uh, on the day or uh, the night of the day when um, he had got his ex gracia 20 pounds as ex gracia yes <clears throat> and uh, um, actually uh, 
uh, when he when he had come to Jonathan's house at night, late night, uh, he had demanded hundred pounds, but Jonathan had only twenty pounds, uh, and uh, Jonathan actually called his neighbors and security officers to help the family out because nobody came. And at the time, at the time, the leader had made fun of Jonathan's family uh, efforts to uh, arouse help because the leader had known that nobody will come to help the family out. Then, uh, actually, this uh, the leader actually shows the danger and uncertainty of Nigeria uh, at this time. At this time, it means uh, in the period of the post-war situation. Yeah, the situation was full of danger, difficulties, and people were not sure of their future. What will happen in the in the, in the future? Actually, and the the languages which uh, the leader used, yes, the English language, yes, and his English was not quite proficient. And this shows that they were, or the leader was uh, not well educated. Then the thief chorus, chorus, yeah, the leader, along with the leader, they were more, you know, thieves more than uh, four or five, okay? So how were they? Uh, they were loyal to the leader. They used to obey what the leader used to tell them and request the leader to search the house when Jonathan agrees to give only 20 pounds instead of on that. Jonathan was demanded 100 pounds, but he said that he had just 20 pounds. And then at the time, the other thieves also told the leader to go inside and search, thinking that, uh, thinking that Jonathan may have more amount of money than he said. Okay. And the next one, the army officer. The army officer actually during, uh, during the war, war period, uh, the, uh, um, the army officer or Jonathan was told to give his bicycle so that that bicycle could be used in the war. But uh, what happens, uh, um, Jonathan, he um, bribed the army officer. Yes, he bribed the army officer so uh, his bike was safe and he had buried later on uh, so that nobody would take his bike away. And uh, the army officer actually represents the untrustworthy and incompetent authority in this particular act. The toes peeping out of one blue and one, one brown canvas shoe with the two stars of his rank. The army officer say during that period, the army officer actually they were not, uh, you know, uh, trustworthy. They took bribe from you know um, prime other uh, other commoners actually at the time. And one example, the one army, yes, he, he took bribe so that uh, he didn't take, uh, you know, Jonathan's bike or Jonathan's bicycle. That had a certain lack of grip or firmness in his manner, yes. The next one, next, uh, you know, robbery victim. Robbery victim, he was one of the victims whom, you know, Jonathan uh, saw that uh, his 20 pounds, his 20 pounds was robbed by you know the criminals yes robbed 20 pounds by a violent criminal and then from you know from him from you know from the robbery victim jonathan had learned that he had to take great care of his you know 20 pounds but unfortunately what happened to that 20 pound was also robbed uh so this is a foil to jonathan both in terms of his querulousness and public displacement so these are these are the main characters in the story, yes. And uh, in the story, there are you know three um, children of uh, Jonathan also. Now let's talk of the main plots. Yes, what happened in the story? Jonathan, a survival of the Nigerian civil war, along with his wife and three of his four children, considered himself extraordinary, extraordinarily lucky. He thinks that he is extraordinarily lucky because. He survived the war despite destructions of physical, physical infrastructures, despite the death of many people during the war. And many of them had to go to their hands or legs amputated or any parts of the bodies amputated, but he was safe. He was safe with his wife and three of his four children. So he thought that he was extra, extraordinarily lucky. He had 
come out of the war with five inestimable blessings. He thought that he came, he survived the war and he got five blessings. Blessings were his head, his wife Maria's head and the heads of three out of their four children. And he also had thought that two miracles took place to, took place to him. That was one, his old bicycle, for which he had bribed the two pounds to an army officer, and which he buried during the war to ensure you won't be stolen. And the next one was his house, old house in Inugo. He used the bicycle as a taxi for ferrying camp officials and their families across the four mile stretch to the nearest star road to earn a small pile of Biafran money. So he has used the bicycle, yes, as a taxi and he used to earn from there. Not only that, uh, after he laid to you know, Inugu, his, he found his uh, still standing home Another miracle that was one miracle was bicycle, another miracle his home. Yes, yeah, these two were safe despite the destruction of the war. I built his uh, built with mud blocks, the doors and windows were missing, and five seats of the roof as well. So the house was not in proper condition to live in. And then uh, he got a, a very poor or destitute carpenter, and the carpenter had just one hammer blunt plane or few bent and rusty nails in his toolbox or tool bag to repair the house. He repaired the house um, for the Ni five Nigerian shillings. So see, uh, the people who were skillful, their condition was also uh, like this. Yes, after post-war, they didn't have a required number of the tools with them so that they could uh, you know, work and earn money. Then his children too helped him to run the family or to earn money. His children picked mangoes near the military cemetery and sold them to soldiers' wives for a few pennies. Yes, apart from that, his wife also helped him. His wife started making breakfast, akara bowls for neighbors, and Jonathan also what did he do? He also walked. He also started, uh, you know, um, buying palm wine from. Um, the shops and he used to mix, uh, you know, uh, water in that and then he used to sell. So he had changed his home in the form of a bar where soldiers and other people used to come and drink wine. So in this way, they were earning money. So uh, uh, next one, uh, what happened, uh, uh, he had some, you know, rival money and then he went to the treasury uh, to get that exchanged and uh, what was the, uh, the treasury had given him 20 pounds as a reward. Yes, that's called, you know, ex gracia. Okay. And he struggled a lot for that. He, for, for, for five days, he endlessly scuffles in the queues, queues and counter queues, uh, standing in the sun. And after that, he got 20 pounds at uh, ex gracia or, or the turning uh, turning the rebel money in. Yes, so he got the tower, 20 pounds. But uh, what happened uh, with that money, he had to be quite, you know, careful because the situation was not going well. Yes, uh, at different places, there is to be robbery, there is to be theft at different places. So he also had to be quite careful with the money, 20 pounds, which he had got as ex Yes, because he had seen one person Yes, he had seen a man having his 20 pounds dropped by some heartless ruffian means, uh, you know, wallet criminals a couple of days. So from that, he also thought that he had to be quite careful, careful in saving his 20 pounds. But unfortunately, what happens? You can also see in the picture, yes, uh, his families were inside and uh, um, they were calling the police. Yes, and some criminals or thieves came at night. Yeah. But the same night, yes, what happened? A group of thieves knocked on his door. The family, the family was quite frightened and polite with terror. They cried for help. They called the police. They called their neighbors. But all went vain. Nobody came to support him because of the situation. Because even uh, may the police might not have been uh, closer. They might not have heard their help or their shout. 
but the neighbors may have heard but the neighbors yes the neighbors they also might be you know afraid of the thieves afraid of the rovers so they didn't appear they didn't come to help them the thieves then mocked them crying out even louder to indicate how helpless the family was so this also indicates the you know the situation after post war in nigeria the thief leader demanded 100 pounds promising not to hurt janathan or his family if he cooperated yes uh, the thief demanded 100 pounds but actually uh, he didn't have 20, 100 pounds he had just 20 pounds so janathan requested uh, that he had just 20 pounds yes but other you know thieves who were with the leader they said that Jonathan may have more than 100 pounds. So they wished to go inside and search his house to find more. But Jonathan requested them that if they found 100, 100 rupees, so they, they are ready to be sought. Yes, this shows that he was quite honest. Yeah, he was quite trust, truthful. Yes. Uh, so uh, what happens? He gave 20 pounds to the leader and the leader went away or the thieves went away. The next morning, what happened? Jonathan and his family were back at work as the neighbors arrived to sympathize. Next morning, his neighbors came to um, came to ask what happened and he came to sympathize just, oh, this is the situation, so what to do? Yeah, robots come and then they roll the property away, okay? So Jonathan explained to his neighbors that the reward money couldn't compare to what he lost in the war, saying nothing puzzles God, nothing puzzles God. So uh, he said that uh, more things, more things were lost in the war. He lost many things in the war. He lost his son in the war. Yes, he lost, uh, you know, um, uh, he, he lost, but uh, he was not sorry for the money because um, there was nothing for him. And he says that, hey, whatever happens, that happens due to God, on the wish of the God. So nothing puzzles God. Yes, I will complain now. But God is, God is watching, God is watching over there. So this is the overall same, the plots or different events in the story. Now I have tried to show these all events, yes, um, uh, in, in these in pictures, okay? And so a civil peace, okay? Here you can see that, uh, yeah, uh, Nigeria, Nigeria faced a civil war, yes, in, uh, in the 1970s, okay? Uh, the town of Inugu was poverty stricken and Jonathan, but Jonathan is happy that he, his wife and three of his four children survived the war. Yes, and luckily, yes, his house and his bicycle. Yes, these two were safe. Uh, then here the rising action, you, uh, you see here, Jonathan and his family work hard to earn their living, uh, selling a carabos, palm wine. After he was waited in the queues for five days, he got the ex of, of 20 pounds. Yes, uh, rising actions. Mm, similarly, uh, the climax was that the thieves had come uh, to his house on the same night uh, when he had got 20 pounds as ex Yes, uh, though the thieves thought that he was rich, but he was not rich uh, and he had just 20 pounds. And the falling action, uh, actually, the falling action, he gave, uh, you know, 20 pounds. He was ready to give 20 pounds, which he had with him. Yes. And then the thieves left uh, the Igwo's family un unharmed after getting 20 pounds. And uh, the resolution was that the next morning, uh, his neighbors had come. Yes or no? So um, let's see the plot diagram of, uh, you know, the story, whole entire, the whole story. We'll talk of the exposition uh, and exposition of what happened. Uh, yeah, an extraordinary lucky, happy survival. Jonathan, yes, uh, with his family, his bike, his old house in Inugo. The rising exit uses bicycle as a taxi to earn money and goes back home, open, goes back home. Then he opens a bar uh, for the soldiers here in this uh, tree or so. He gets uh, um, he gets uh, a carpenter to repair his house and he gets a award of 20 pounds as expressia for turning in the rebel money. Okay, rising action. And the climax was that uh, he had seen, uh, he had seen uh, a man 
yes who was robbed his 20 pounds pounds was robbed and he had none he knew that he had to be quite careful with his money 20 pounds then uh, on the same night you know that he hears a knock on the door yes and the thieves threatened to kill him if he didn't give the money then falling action thieves uh, take 20 pounds away yes and they didn't do uh, didn't do any harm to the family they took 20 pounds and go away leaving the family safe the resolution jonathan doesn't care about the robbed money but concentrates on his work work ethic okay so um, i have just tried to um, divide the whole the entire story civil piece uh, yes in these three you know categories let's see what's the theme of the story then what we can learn or what a person can learn from this story okay the theme that we nothing puzzles god as god is omnipotent yes jonathan frequently he says that yes god is omnipotent god is uh, you know um omnipresent so whatever happens everything happens or takes place on the wish of god so he leaves everything to god and he says that yes nothing puzzles god yes because god is watching the post war period is also full of difficulties and crimes throughout though though it gives hopes to the survival yes jonathan when you see jonathan he hopes he is quite optimistic though he say he thinks the current situation is uncertain but still he hopes that something and something good will happen in the future he can manage his family yes so he believes in work he believes in his hard work so and uh, this also, this story also shows that even after uh, civil war the condition of nigeria was not settled yes uh, even the people people uh, people at the time yes, they suffered difficulties and there was widespread crime everywhere yes because um, even after you know uh, the war people were not getting sufficient uh, uh, food yes the condition was uh, simply the topsy turvy condition was there it was fluctuating yes the nigeria nigeria had not got a sustainable stay yes even after post war so uh, people had to suffer from different kinds of difficulties and the survivors uh, who survived the war they were searching for new life they were searching for you know new future being hopeful uh, then prevalence of lawlessness when you see that you know um, law was not properly enforced in the post war situation yes some of them were stealing some of them were killing people even after that some of them were looting yes other properties and security officers they were not helping the people they were not working for the justice even the institutions for justice they were not uh, uh, or security they were not working properly yes even uh, in this period an importance of war, uh, work ethics actually work ethics runs throughout the whole story when you see you know jonathan and jonathan family even after the war yes he, he uses his buy bicycle to earn money yes he walks he believes in work and uh, he rebuilds he actually he repairs his house then he um, uses his house uh, as a bar to earn money he works hard yes he doesn't want to um, confiscate others property as are now so he believes in hard work and then untrustworthiness of officers causes crimes in aftermath of a war so mostly what happens uh, even when you see the story when you uh, remember um, the event of the army officer who had taken bribe from him yes that also shows that uh, you know even in war the army officers were not trustworthy yes they used to take bribe yes uh, from commoners yeah and uh, uh, similarly even after war what happens you know such army officers were involved in, in crimes yes and when you see that uh, the main job of the security forces was to protect uh, human the locals but uh, 
See, when the thieves came to his door, Jonathan's door, yes, he cried for help, but no security man or no policeman came to assist him. So, see, th these are, uh, these are, you know, uh, these are uh, the themes we can simply predict from, we can simply deduce from 